Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 29th, 2023. Well, yesterday we had just another one of those days of relatively low volume, choppiness, uncertainty in the market. We ended up with a consumer confidence number that was a little bit stronger than um, expected that got the buyers going, but then we had some mixed information coming out of Fed members yesterday, and we ended up pulling back um, on the day, leaving some shooting star patterns behind. But this morning, take a look at what's happening. Oh, we've decided to just get all kinds of bullish this morning, looking for a pop-up with a lot of confidence, apparently, that the pending data will be good. Overnight, we had Asian markets mostly lower overnight. There's some real pressure going on in China. China uh, closed um, at a one month low. We had um, Hong Kong uh, selling off pretty sharply yesterday down 2.08%. So mostly lower, only um, Australia was a little bit higher um, on, on overnight, um, only up 0.29%. We have European markets this morning, however, quite bullish across the board. Only the FTSE is just down um, ever so slightly, um, down at 0.02%, but everything else is green across the board. We have oil futures higher this morning as well. They're pushing on up. Remember, we've got an OPEC meeting coming up here on Thursday and the possibility that they will cut production, raising those um, um, gas prices back up for us here in the United States. So watch that closely. But one of the things has been pretty remarkable is the absolute devastation that's happening in natural gas. It's almost like we've decided we no longer need natural gas in this world. And it is just falled, falling like a rock and continues to fall this morning. Let's take a look um, at our bonds. Now our bonds pulled back really sharply yesterday and um, they're continuing to show a little bit of weakness here this morning. The two year is at 4.70. The 10 year is at 4.28. So once again, we, we have this, um, the 210 inversion is extreme and that continues to point to recession, even though the market is trying to ignore all of those things and really trying to get something done here this morning. Um, we still have an inversion here that we need to be paying attention to and this inversion often leads to recession and we should be watching for that possibility that jobs as the consumer weakens that jobs could start um, becoming endangered here um, in the very near future so watch carefully for that so what does all that mean for this morning well how about we settle in let's buckle up Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can just gain a little information about how we might want to approach the market for the day. Let's try to shake off that bias and let's just look at the price action of the chart. Well. Yesterday, we left a bit of a shooting star behind. We did push on through to the upside here, though. Breaking through that little resistance that you can see in the chart, we pushed up through there and we ended up closing just a little bit higher. So um, I'm gonna move this line up and suggest that the next test is gonna be just a little bit higher in here in that chart. You can see there's a little teeny tiny bit of resistance in there, but if uh, the bulls can push on through there, there's really no reason to believe at this point that we can't test the um, highs of the year here in um, the diamonds chart. And I think that's where where we're, we're headed this morning, unless we get economic data that um, disagrees with this bullish run in the market. Um, taking a look here, if the bears, however, were to find that inspiration, well, maybe a retest back down here. There's a little bit of a price support right in that area. Failing that area would probably
actually send us back down into this price support in the chart. If we were to take a look at our um, SPY, SPY, also pushing through um, uh, that resistance here this morning, you can see yesterday we ran right up there, tagged that resistance that I marked, and then ended up pulling back here on the day. This morning we're trying to gap through that. You will want to remember I put this line in here, that uh, trend line here in the chart that we're uh, pushing up into as well. So we've got a little bit of a double whammy of resistance up there. But if we can push through this level and that data doesn't hurt us here this morning, then I think there's every reason to believe that we could be pushing up here to the um, highs of the year in the SPY. And we certainly got a good start on it today with a lot of bullishness here in the pre-market. If the bulls, however, um, don't uh, get that uh, warm and fuzzy this morning out of the economic data then a pullback and the bears come in if the pullback comes in here we would look for a price support right here in this area however if that were to fail in that area then um, then we start getting a little bit worried here we might come down into an area like this breaking support would be pretty substantial pullback if um, that were to occur and we've got the kind of data that can make um, big moves here today either up down um, um, depending on how the market reacts to this morning's data if we take a look at our QQQ, our QQQ is also strong here this morning, continuing to push on higher. And this is this is really kind of odd um, seeing um, Hong Kong selling off so strongly, which is very tech heavy. And um, here in the U.S., it's just buy, buy, buy. And you can see um, we've already broken out of the yearly high. And what I've got up here is the next resistance level above. And that's just some of the underneath resistance here in the all-time highs here on the QQQ. And we're stretching up here strong this morning. And so if the data is good, there's no reason to believe why we can't push on up here and at least test that resistance. Breaking that, then we're probably going to be starting to look at the all-time highs here in the NASDAQ. What's amazing is big tech, uh, the big tech PE ratios are just absolutely out of control and how much longer we can continue to just pound into those without any acknowledgement of what it's actually costing to do that. Um, we'll see. Um, it's, it's a remarkable circumstance that we see in this market right now. And then if we take a look at our IWM, IWM um, continuing to struggle and, and there's uh, the perfect reflection of what happens um, to an index that doesn't include um, any tech stocks and you can see it right in here. We can't get moving. We can't get going. We're um, uh, struggling in here against this resistance. The good news is in here, as I've mentioned before, we have an upside trend and we have a good positive pattern in this chart. The question is, will we be able to pop through here and challenge that next resistance level, or will we continue to consolidate this move or even pull back um, in the IWM? We're just not getting any attention here at all, um, lagging way behind um, the other indexes um, here in the market. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX yesterday showed us a little bit of fear, but then um, big tech came along and started rallying up again and um, really saved the market um, yesterday for, from some selling. And then we brought that fear all the way back down as if there was nothing, uh, nothing here to be concerned about. Again, we're in that complacency area and with the gap up this morning, uh, my guess is we're gonna make a new low here in the VIX. Um, a recent low anyway, pushing on down into um, a really a seriously complacent area of the market where we're so uber competent, uh, confident in the market here. Um, it's becoming just a little bit on that side of irrational, but we'll see. We'll see if they can continue to push that through or not. And there's every reason to believe they can the way things are shaping up this morning. If we take a look at our um, T2122, now our T2122 pulled back a little bit yesterday. And then as we rallied back up, it, it kind of 
push back up here. So what we have here this morning with this gap up open, I'm going to expect um, here first thing this morning, we're going to see our T21 gapping up into the bearish reversal zone. Um, I think there's a really good chance that we could uh, peg this um, almost at the ceiling uh, today, the way we're shaping up this morning. So keep an eye on that. Now, if, if the pending data happens to uh, reverse everything today, you just want to keep in mind, we've got a big opening to the downside and not a lot of really good support areas underneath if for some reason the bears were to engage. I'm not saying they will, but we do want to respect the possibility that that could be the case and we'll want to watch carefully for uh, that potential. If we take a look at our T2108, uh, T2108 ended up today yesterday just dead flat. It really couldn't get anything going yesterday. Um, nothing wrong with this chart, however. We were um, up above some support areas here in the chart. Um, we're getting into that real frothy zone up here uh, around 65. Anything between about 65 and 75. We're in that very frothy zone where we're, we're kind of running out of uh, things to buy. Everybody that's going to be in will be in um, sort of thing. And then we look uh, for um, either a longer consolidation in the market or a stronger pullback. But right now, nothing here to worry about in T2108. And I'm going to say the same on T2107, um, except for the fact that we've got a very big portion of the market being the Russell, um, the Russell 2000, the biggest index is just not performing at all. If we don't have big tech in it, it's really not moving. And you can see yesterday was very, very flat here on the Russell, uh, or I mean on T2107, um, not getting any price movement there. And if we pull this back, we're still struggling against this resistance in the chart. Now, perhaps today that data can push us up through this uh, level in the chart. If it doesn't, then we might pull back here eventually and catch this support level. Nothing wrong with that if that were to occur. If we push on through, awesome. We'll just have to wait and see if the data is good enough to uh, continue moving us through. And then if we look at our T2101, one of the reasons we've been struggling here in the market is we've seen a very substantial decline in breadth. Even though we're moving higher, the momentum of the market is declining pretty sharply on the bullish side. Now that may change today um, with the data, but watch that carefully. Um, here we've been weakening in our momentum to the upside, getting a little bit um, tired and exhausted to the upside. So we'll see if that data can da today can re-inspire that November rally and take us right into the end of the month. I think that's a good possibility, but watch carefully today. That data could produce anything. Then let's take a look at our... Um, economic calendar today. Our economic calendar obviously is going to be a, a rather busy one this morning. We're going to get mortgage applications here this morning and then of course that GDP number will be coming out. Now consensus on the GDP is expecting it to be absolutely flat over last time. We do have to remember that this was pretty hot last time so um, we'll want to watch carefully um, how this plays out here in the market. Could see some su substantial volatility in the pre-market um, after this number. So just be careful because all the bullishness that we're seeing this morning could get way better. Depending on how we react to this number, it could suddenly become worse. So be prepared for that volatility here in the pre-market. We'll also get international trading goods, and we largely ignore international trade um, anymore. It's looking at a little bit of a decline in our trade deficit to 86.7 is what the consensus is looking at over, um, excuse me, an increase, 86.7 from 85.7. Eight. So trade deficits not going in the right direction. And, you know, as we looked, I, I mentioned yesterday that we absolutely ignore anything that happens in our uh, manufacturing sector 
sector, the Richmond Fed manufacturing number came in at a negative five. This is abysmal and um, doesn't seem to matter to the market anymore. As long as there's big tech to buy, nothing else seems to matter. And um, later on today, we're going to have retail inventories. We're going to have wholesale inventories. Consensus is looking for those wholesale inventories to tick just a little bit higher. And then we've got petroleum status, which could be an interesting number today, just simply because uh, we'll be kind of pondering that OPEC meeting and um, that possible decision of production cuts. So keep an eye on that as those numbers come out today. We're going to hear uh, from Mester. We've got a beige book and there's a, some bond auctions in here today to be paying attention to. Looking forward into tomorrow, we're not out of the woods yet. We're going to have those jobless claims and then of course that personal incomes and outlays, that core PCE number, that's the Fed's favorite reading. So don't be too surprised after we get through the volatility of the morning that we might fade a little bit just waiting on that core number tomorrow. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here today. And our earnings calendar is a bit busier. You may want to um, uh, click the link below the title of the video taking you back to the morning blog because I won't be able to cover all of these this morning um, um, in, in this morning's video. Um, CRM. CRM will be reporting today, trying to move a little bit higher, gapping up here. Maybe they've already reported here this morning, trying to show a little bit of bullishness here in the pre-market. Take a, a look at CRM. Um, we're going to hear, whoops, uh, from Dollar Tree today, it looks like um, that's moving lower. Again, retail's been struggling here because our consumer's been weakening. So watch that carefully. Uh, five Below will be reporting today. We're going to hear from Foot Locker. As you can see, big theme of retail here today. Um, OKTA um, will be reporting um, Obviously, a um, little bit on the bearish side there this morning on that. We're going to hear from Snow today, and ZUO will also be reporting today. So, uh, once again, if you want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of the video in the description. That'll take you back to the morning blog where you can get that full list. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could do me that quick favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment on the channel, make sure you click um, the subscribe button and the bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Um, so I truly, truly appreciate um, all the kind support to this channel. Um, I apologize yesterday. I got too busy and I didn't get a chance to answer all the comments. I will be back on that task here this morning because it is very, very important to me um, to try and help as many people in their trading as they can and answer those questions and answer those comments. So thank you so much, everyone, who does take the time to do that and share these videos out on your social media feed. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. And remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in a market like this. We're so incredibly extended to one side and um, it's, it's a relentless bull at the moment. And sometimes those can end with a real devastating pullback. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Just be prepared for that possibility. Um, that we're, we're seeing some things in the market that don't make a whole lot of sense. Now, let's take a look um, at some of these stocks. Uh, follow your risk tolerances, follow your rules, never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. So first off, um, looking here in the chart, let's take a look at what's going on in utilities. Um, XLU, XLU moving up here, breaking a downtrend. This is something that would be relatively odd to see utilities getting very strong when we're really surging in the tech sector of the market because utilities is more of a safety play here. Um, it's a dividend play, but boy, we've been seeing that come up here, breaking through some resistance, holding up um, in here 
here nicely on XLU. So keep an eye on that. If you, and if you look through some of the stocks um, in that sector, very pretty patterns. AES, AEP moving up here, ES beautiful bullish patterns here overall um, I actually even placed an alert on NEE yesterday and NEE um, is setting up here today for that possible breakout on utilities so keep an eye on that you might also want to keep an eye on some of these old boring boring companies like Colgate Palmolive you know this is pretty remarkable to see so many defensive sector stocks rallying so strongly all of a sudden um, this to me smacks of a rotation that there's an institutional rotation going into safety right now um, in some of these old boring dividend payers so be careful here if this truly is a rotation we could see big tech all of a sudden soften um, here in the market so watch Colgate we've got um, stocks like 3M as you know I've talked about this one recently popping through my alert stretching on up here into resistance looking good we've been seeing moves from Altria uh, breaking down trends moving up Philip Morris making those moves back to the upside um, Mondelez making a real strong run to the upside into price resistance again just these old boring defensive sector stocks even stocks like AT&T making that nice upside move and Verizon making that nice upside just boring old companies making all kinds of gains here in the market and those are just those old boring dividend payers now here's another thing that just smacks of a little bit of concern now obviously we've been seeing the weak of the dollar pulling back and I've mentioned commodity prices typically rise in that circumstance but my goodness gold gold just went like a rocket ship yesterday up um, over $29 an ounce um, yesterday pushing up here to some resistance highs in the chart um, we'll see if um, it has the energy to push through that a little rest or pullback seems to me like a very good likelihood to be paying attention to um, at this point in time but gold really really strong and if the dollar continues to weaken then um, that's an issue and, 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 and again this is kind of a defensive sector of the market if we see some weakening out there in the economy folks move to uh, more of that safety play and, and gold is definitely a safety play also silver big strong move here in silver pushing up here to a next resistance level that we're going parabolic here on silver needs a rest needs a consolidation for sure I wouldn't chase it but watch that carefully um, again that whole safety thing is really starting to perk up here now I don't know if it can continue but we'll want to watch that pretty closely take a look at FCX on the commodity side you heard me talk about that early this week um, saying keep an eye on copper and then we came back in here found that support and started moving on through to the upside so um, we're seeing some of those um, plays work out as the dollar weakens um, you heard me talk about steel dynamics um, STLD holding this major support area found that support pulling back and here we go off to the races I've been talking about CCJ CCJ had um, a little consolidation yesterday interesting here in the pre-market we've got a big pop and drop on it but keep an eye on some of these uranium plays they're showing lots of strength and then um, even out into the solar space we're getting some bullishness coming in here um, popping up um, off of this price support heading into some resistance on run so quite a few stocks making uh, moves here um, more of the defensive type play more of the old boring type stuff we can even take a look into some of the um, healthcare drug makers that have been so beaten down they're starting to come up and show some bullishness here in the market so keep an eye on that you might want to keep an eye here on Las Vegas Sands this thing was starting to turn around and do really really well but then all of this bad 
consumer data that we've been picking up here where the consumers are slowing, really causing a problem here in LVS, pushing this down. So be really careful on some of those consumer areas, um, retail areas, because they're starting to struggle here in the market. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here and listening, supporting the channel. I do truly appreciate it. I will see you right back here a bright and early Thursday morning. And I wish you all the very, very best.